people out there who who aren't familiar with the with the three Western religions, mm-hmm. they basically all start the same way, and that and, and basically <laughs> says in in the beginning was the Word, and the Word, and, and the yeah. Word was made flesh, right? So there's obviously something about sound, language, spoken word. Well, um, it, it, it's been very hard on me, and it's tripped me up um, as far as the exertion I've had to make to understand the word, because it's, um, it's obviously not W-O-R-D. And what I discovered is that in Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, um, Aramaic, the word is represented by the letter Aleph, A-L-I-F, hmm. which is a straight line. I think everybody's somewhat familiar with the, the word Aleph, the term Aleph. So it turns out, um, and we always hear that Arabic can be a difficult language or those languages can be difficult because the vowels aren't written. Mm. Well, what, what I discovered was is that the, uh, the saying is, is the Aleph is the seat for the Hamza. It turns out that the Aleph isn't even a vowel. The, the Aleph is a consonant. It's called the international phonetic symbol glottostop. Um, the saying is Aleph, Aleph is the seat for the Hamza. The Hamza is... Um, is is a, a consonant, and then the vowels are diacritical marks, whether it's short a or broad a. So, um, and that so it isn't just that the mysticism was talking about the word of God, but there was actually certain linguistics and phonetics. It was literally a science, an art. Right. So they so, so they literally were sounds, spoken sounds that, if done correctly, could access what. Um, I, I'm very certain on what it accesses. I believe that um, every one of us has an inherent potential to have um, communion with God, not just through prayer, although there's nothing greater than prayer, but also if you know the name of God, how to say it correctly, I believe that you actually can receive, through communion with God, you actually get inspiration, illumination. I work in coils. Okay, They made a coil, which I... Um, am named after, called the rodent coil. All right, let's talk a little bit about coils, first of all, for people who don't know, who ne- never heard the word coil before. What's a coil? Well, um, to start with, the ultimate coil is the human temple. That's why we're called the, the mortal coil. We've heard the saying, the hmm. mortal coil. Yes, sure. Okay. Our body's a coil. The ultimate, um, and coils do one of two things. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm closing it in a little bit, but they transmit and they receive, okay? The, they can be an antenna, mm-hmm. okay? And the ultimate antenna to transmit and receive is the human brain, this mortal coil. Mm-hmm. And I believe that in... So my goal in life is to always be healthy enough, clean enough in diet and lifestyle to get inspiration, divine guidance. And I believe through the name of God is the ultimate source of inspiration and divine guidance. Hmm. So that, those, are, those are my views. and uh, Maybe I couldn't have said it as eloquently as it could have been put. Well, no, I mean, it, it shows that it comes from... It, look, the bottom line is this, is that the mathematics behind this stuff speak for themselves. Okay. And that, and that comes to it. But I want people to understand, you know, that there is sort of a cross between science and mysticism here because, because much of what you've uh, discovered comes from, uh, you know, ancient mystic traditions, including, you know, numerology and, and these ancient texts that, that, have, that have secrets encoded in them. And you, you have been able to uncover some of this stuff. And I, want to, I just want people to understand a little bit of where it came from. Well, you, you, you pretty much encapsulate it very excellently. Classically, and, and it's just so simple, we're always taught, at least of a, the ones of us that are given a religious uprearing, if we have a problem, if we have a need, go to the scriptures. The scriptures always have your answers. Hmm. And um, my my field that I went to the scriptures was uh, it's a form of paranormal psychology. Um, I, I'm going to be I seem like I'm I'm insane. No, go go. We got plenty of time, so you just do it. Well, my goal was to understand how to tap into the underutilized remaining 90 percent potential of the brain. Right, they tell us we only use 10% plus or minus of our, the capacity of our brain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and we only know 10% of the universe, supposedly. Interesting correlation. Probably a lot less than that, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, maybe like 0.01%. Well, it's so vast. 
um, I believe the shape of the universe is a torus or a donut. Okay. Uh, so I, you know, and, and there is no mathematics in conventional Western academia that can see over the event horizon of a of a black hole, or and because the universe warps. But anyway, the math that I have discovered, which comes out of the scriptures, explains that which, everything in its ultimate shape becomes that of a donut. Which scriptures? I'm of a religion called Baha'i Faith. Okay. And I, uh, there's a prophet called Baha'u'llah, and he reveals certain textbooks. Um, the Seven Valleys and the Four Valleys, the Hidden Words, the Book of Certitude. Um, there's certain tablets, like, um, oh, there's... If anyone emailed me, I'd be glad to send them okay, copies. Yeah, no, they can do a web search under Baha'i, B-A-H-A-I, faith. Right. It's not, it's not that obscure. Certainly, there, there are people in the Baha'i faith that, that uh, are everywhere, certainly. So, okay, but, so... But the other Baha'is, most Baha'is, in fact, I can say um, probably accurately that no Baha'i is familiar with the mathematics, the technology that's in, enshrined and encrypted within the scriptures. All right. So this is the, yeah, this, this is where the, where the rubber hits the road is that, is that these these things are 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 hidden, I guess, is, or occulted, you know, in, inside these texts, and 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 you were able to uh, to uncover it. And so I um, I always sometimes like um, race, you know, um, jumpstart things, but um, I'd like to say to the audience, if I can be so forward, please. Um, I I don't make. Um, small claims about what I do. Um, the most primitive electrical coil that I produced, um, actually other engineers made it on my behalf, mm -hmm. um, just made in the most simplest um, environment.